So I, was trying to, I was trying to look cool. Uh, <laughs> for for me, um, why why I reached out to Arna because I was being selfish. Um, I, I was being selfish in the sense that I wanted an explanation. After this happened, there was. Uh, a real lack of cooperation from law enforcement, a real, un like, uh, a sense of almost being re-victimized by law enforcement. Um, we weren't getting clarity on what happened inside. We, we weren't getting clarity on why it happened, what intelligence they had, almost to the point that you felt disrespected. You're like, now this happened, but you could tell us what it was, why, what was a shooter going through? You know, treat us like real people, not like just, some coddled immigrants who just came over and can't handle the truth. So, so then I, that's why I reached out to Arnold. Is I, I'm like, I wanted the truth. Why would this somebody like this do something like this? And uh, you know, what I wanted and what I got were two different things. <laughs> I obviously got the truth, but uh, uh, you know, more, more than that, more important than that, I, you know, I, I, got, I gained a brother. I gained, I gained a friend. And I gained someone that was gonna say, you know what, I'll not only tell you what happened and why it happened, but I'll walk with you and we can explain it to other people too. When we do a talk, I talk about how the kindness of people who I claim to hate changed the course of my life from one of hate and violence to one in peace of, of peace and love. And party talks about how helping other people heal has been such an important part of his healing process after his father was murdered by a guy who was someone that I used to be. So our stories have this really beautiful synergy and when we speak to audiences, I really believe everyone in that audience has a little bit of perpetrator in them. Everyone has a little bit of victim in them. We've all been hurt, we've all hurt people. And when people listen to us, it, it wakes up the, the realization that they need to look at their own mindset. And, and how, how is their mindset contributing to the problems that we have in our society? And, all, and more importantly, how can their mindset contribute to the solution? So we, we want to inspire people to become solution-oriented and to really dedicate themselves to cultivating the things in our society that are good for us as human beings. The, the kindness, gratitude, forgiveness, the, these essential elements of human happiness that uh, happiness can't exist without. The first school that we spoke at, we started to realize uh, immediately that children were just suffering. And a lot of the suffering led them to feeling isolated. They felt like they were alone, that, like nobody else could understand my pain. And so a lot of what we do is, is understand isolation from a, from a trauma lens. I'm saying, okay, what's causing you to feel isolated is this, 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 and this. Now let's give you the creative response to be able to address that, have some commonality with other people in different communities who you feel like you might have nothing in common with, but they're also going through some of the same feelings you're going through. Wade Page was like exactly who I used to be. He was, uh, he was a white power skinhead. He, was, he played in white power bands. I, I would bet my vast fortune that um, he knew of my band Centurion and he was likely a fan and inspired by our band to do what he was doing. So I, I completely saw myself in him and thanks for him. I, it, it was never lost on me since then that had it not been for some very brave people who tr chose to respond to me with kindness instead of hostility, I could have ended up like him. I could have reached such a depth that nothing but homicide followed by suicide seemed to make sense. So I, I, I'm always painfully aware of that, and it's definitely a, a driving factor in my urgency to try to make the world a less violent place. If I would have remained in the movement for another 10 years and practiced that hate and violence for another 10 years and seen my life continue to go to shit, 
and be continually stuck in this process of blame rather than take responsibility for my life going to shit, I would be like, this is their fault, it's their fault, it's their fault. It's, it's totally conceivable that I could have reached that point as well. Yeah. I think the surprising thing to me is not that Arnold sees himself in Wade Page. Obviously, he's going to see himself in Wade Page. Uh, he, he was, you know, part of the same organization. He was part of the white supremacist movement. But it's, it's the thing that surprises me is that other people don't see themselves in Wade Page. Yeah, that's, it, <laughs> that's it, a great Is that if I can't see myself in Wade Page, what can I really do about this except to vilify this person? And, and what, what society does too much and too often and too easily is that they dismiss themselves and say, you know what, there's nothing we can do about this. I don't see, I, he's just a monster. He's, he's, he's he, you know, I can't understand him. And when we do that, we, we, when we don't see ourselves in that person, then we lose our, our ability as humans to do anything about it. Absolutely. For, for this country in particular, we've had 500 years of trauma that we're not addressing right now. And then this is what's causing a lot of these things. But now we're, we're, we're focusing attention on, on this and this and this, while not focusing attention on the causes. Trauma is what gets you to the point where this black and white thinking makes sense. Yeah. So it, the, the, you, you need to have the element of personal trauma, but you also need the external echo chamber that's like whipping your personal trauma into now something that has implications uh, across all of society. You know, if you have a veteran who goes off to war, he needs to think that those people are bad. He needs that just so that he doesn't have to double, you know, second guess himself. Well, we have the same mentality here. We have to, we have to label those people as bad, whoever those people are. From my experience, I wouldn't still be here if I hadn't have begun a process of self-forgiveness. Uh, my, my grudge against myself nearly took my life. And so I, I can say for sure that, that in my case, and from a perpetrator standpoint, the self-forgiveness process is crucial to have any chance of being any kind of a functional human being going forward. And from knowing party as well as I do, and from being part of the Forgiveness Project, and knowing all sorts of other people who have really made their way through just absolutely horrific trauma through forgiveness, stories of forgiveness need to be broadcast far and wide as often as possible because those are ways that people who need to go through this process will get that beacon lit to be like, hey, I can be in a better place than I am. This is how I do it. That's, that's how people start, it dawns on them that they need to begin this forgiveness pro process. For right now, I don't attach what Wade Page did to Arnold. I don't, I, those two things, you know, I, I actually attach more of the response to Arnold and what we can do about it. Um, and so I don't, I don't see him necessarily as a, yeah, you know, it's tough to, I don't even see him as a former white supremacist anymore. I just see him as, Arnold, and uh, it's not until like moments, <laughs> moments like these that I'm reminded of, of his history and things like that. But but why I do it, uh, why I do it is simply why why forgive? Why do we forgive? As as people, you know, if if somebody wrongs us, why not just always hold that that sort of vengeance towards them? Ultimately, we have to come to the realization that the only real vengeance is forgiveness. And, and Arnold reminds me of that. We see this over and over again. As Party and I travel and do gigs together, almost every single time we speak, someone will come up to Party after we talk, a lot of white people, and they'll be like, I'm so sorry about your father. I'll never forget that day. I knew where I was when it happened. And oftentimes they're in tears. And he comforts them. He's, he's, he comforts their suffering, it, it, their, them sharing his suffering. And it's just one of the most amazing things I've ever seen human beings do. And uh, I, all I can do is just try to 
ride his coattails. No. It's, <laughs> it's, no, it's, knowing this guy, I don't know how anybody could sit and talk to him and not be blown away <laughs> and, and not, you know, not just completely have all their, their prejudices and bullshit blown out of the water. 